Hi, this is the Black Bear Prepper, and today we're going to be talking about Glocks. And Glocks have been famous for one thing. Well, reliability, really. I mean, just that massive amount of reliability that these guns have. They shoot when they're under in mud, they shoot in all kinds of situations, mainly for two reasons. One, they have a pin system on their slides which is only contacting in two spots which allows mud to build up in these areas and still allow the gun to slide forward without actually jamming it up which is a neat idea uh, they tend to fire almost every single time I always say they're the gun that you know every time I pull the trigger I expect it to go bang not all guns can say that you know and especially in muddy or you know situations where you're in an, in a bad environment now, one thing that you guys have seen, and I'm sure if you're looking on YouTube, is Glocks shoot underwater. Well, that is kind of true and not true. Glocks only shoot it underwater if they've been modified to do so. Now, the way we do that is by changing out a, um, a set of cups, the, you know, the firing pin cups. Now, to get kind of past this, one, all of our guns have been safety checked. There's no mags and they have been safety checked. But the big thing we got to remember about this, guys, is do not try this at home. This is a modification you do to your gun so that you can need it down the road if it ever falls in the water. It is not something you should be trying at home. And especially in city limits. And especially with not being safety trained to do this. This is not something you'll ever, hopefully, ever have to do, but it's a simple modification that you can do and it's fairly cheap. So uh, the big problem Glock has had is people have tried to shoot their their Glocks inside toilets and blown up their toilet. They've tried to shoot them in bathtubs and blown up their bathtubs. These guns, even in water, are dangerous up to about four feet. And I would say even much, much farther because there is a concussion that goes along with it. Saying that, I am saying, please do not do this. But I'm gonna show you kind of a neat way of how to modify your gun if you want to have a little bit more reliability. Now, uh, you've seen lots of videos on how to disassemble your firearms, but we're going to go ahead and show you how to do it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I always check three times to make sure that there's nothing in the gun, make sure there's no mag in the gun. I point it in a safe direction, hopefully somewhere where it's in the ground or something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger. Now once I pull the trigger, I can grip the top of the gun just like this. There's two slides on both sides. So what I do is I wrap my my right or left hand underneath the gun, get ready to pull those guys down, wrap my right hand, put my thumb on the back, pull backwards just a little bit, and the whole slide falls off the gun. Now once the slides off the gun, it basically you're going to be able to pull out your spring. Your barrel will just drop right out right there, which is why I really like these guns. Very, very super simple guns. Now, this is where we kind of get tricky, and this is where I'm going to have Madison pull in here real quick. This spot right here, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but right in between your firing pin and the hole where the firing pin goes is a little plastic part, and that's actually this guy right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull down on that piece of plastic right there, push it forward. And you're going to need a tool like this. Now, Glock makes one. I don't think you need it. This tool works just fine. So you're going to pull in there, push down. That's going to release the pressure on the back and allow your back plate to come off. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead, set this guy up. We're going to push it down, slide it off. Now, keep in mind, I always keep my thumb over the top because this is under spring tension. And you also have your spring that runs your ejector or your extractor, sorry, your extractor. So go ahead and at that point you can slide out your firing pin. Now your firing pin is basically made up of four parts. You have your cups which are holding in, you have your back plastic thing here, your firing pin and your spring. So keep in mind that you have to have, and really the cups are in two different pieces, so really it's more like five pieces. So kind of keep in mind, and this is under spring tension. I'm going to show you a quick little trick that really works well to take this guy out because this guy is a little hard to get out. What you're going to do is you're going to slide the firing pin in backwards. So the firing pin is now sticking in the opposite direction and your little hook right here is going to set up against the gun. Now when you push down, your cups pop right out. 
So, but what I want to show you before we do that is that what we've done is we've notched the firing pin cups so that air, dirt, water, all that can go past there and not get lodged in here. And this allows it to be able to shoot underwater per se. Like again, I do not recommend you do that. So what it basically does is what ends up happening is you end up creating an airtight seal when the pistons are regular, which is when the pistons are regular, and I'm going to try to show you guys that on this piece of paper here, if I can, and we're going to look down on them. See, if you look down on them, you can see that it's a complete circle on top, and this is one we've already done, which is, we're going to try to spin them so you guys can see them. One, we've put two notches on both sides, and one is still the factory one. Now, you can buy these through eBay. They're, they go for about $12.95 if you buy the OEM ones, or about $10 if you buy the Wolf ones. All seem to work just fine, and I've never seen anybody say that they have any problems. Now, uh, Glock has said that putting in the Marine uh, cups does not affect the reliability of the gun. Is it something I think you should run out and do tomorrow? No. Do I think if you're gonna if you're gonna go ahead and do it, you should do it for free? I think so. I don't think there's a real problem. Uh, do I think that you should blame me if your gun doesn't work after this? No, because you should make your decision on that. So make your decision if you want to do this or you want to buy them online, and then go out there and test them. Now, I would recommend you have a gunsmith do this if you're going to have it done, or if you have a friend that is a gunsmith, go ahead and do this for you. Uh, it does take a little simple file. Uh, we just use one of these nice little, you know, uh, Swedish files here which are just real cheap, you know, you can get a set of them pretty cheap, about 35 bucks for a good set. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you kind of how to pull this all apart. Again, we're going to go ahead and stick it back in the gun. Normally this guy would go in straight in this way, like this. We're going to pull it out, we're going to flip it around, and we're going to stick it in so it sets with the hook sitting on there. This makes it incredibly easy to pull out the cups safely without shooting everything across the room. Now keep in mind, there is a lot of spring tension on this guy. So be careful when you do it. Go ahead and pull that guy apart. This is a good time to clean out this area here. Make sure everything's cleaning here. You can pull out your, your parts here and we'll be showing you a video on how to do a Glock trigger job. But it allows you to also clean your firing pin and inspect it, make sure there's no dirt or anything in there. Because like I said, we do not want any lube in the firing pin area. That will cause it to build up dirt and cause problems. Now this is why we recommend doing this, is because if you leave that little hole on both sides, and again, I know it's hard to see, but there's a little groove and a little groove like this, and what we're basically gonna do is come in and actually groove that guy out in two places so that it will allow dirt and water to pass by and allow it to fire in theory underwater but mainly full of mud so it really improves that ability to be a little bit more reliable so I do it to my guns these are guns that uh, friends were gonna change these parts out anyway so we said hey look let's change them out and see if it works works just fine so what we're gonna end up doing is taking our pieces here now this is something, it's a good idea to have an extra set of these, because if you break one or something like that, you want to replace the full set. You don't want to replace just one, they do work towards the gun. You're going to go ahead and just take a groove, take about an eighth of an inch to about a sixteenth of an inch really on the corner, start cutting your groove, and this does take a little bit of time, you know, a couple minutes to do it, so don't rush yourself, there's no reason to go fast, and just eat away at it until you've got your groove in there. Now once your groove is in there, um, once your groove is in there, and you groove it all the way down until it's flush, now the gun is slightly more reliable. Keep in mind, these are incredibly reliable guns anyways. Now it's real simple just to reinstall everything. Again, go ahead and reinstall your firing pin upside down like that again. Go ahead and put your spring back on. Just pull it down with your right hand, or your left hand there, sorry. and go ahead and reinstall your firing pin cups. 
Okay, once they're back installed, you go ahead and slide this guy back down in there. It's always a good idea to check if you push down on this little round pin right here, this will allow the firing pin to drive forward and allows you to go ahead and test to make sure that your firing pin is sticking out of the chamber, which is very hard to see, but it should come right out the tip there. And then reset when you let go. So just something to think about, check and make sure everything's working properly when you put it back together. And if you're somebody that is trying to use this gun for your livelihood, you're going to want to make sure you shoot it before you go out there and say that everything's fine. Now, I just took the back plate. I put the back plate in there slightly. I take my thumbnail, push it down, push it back in there so about halfway. And then I take my screwdriver, push down on me my extractor spring, and just push it forward. Once it's forward, I go ahead and put my barrel back in, put my spring back in, and it has uh, two little notches you can go into. Make sure it's in the bottom one. Right like that. And rack it three times, make sure it's in good shape, make sure there's nothing in the chamber, and go ahead and fire it to make sure that it's working. Now, if you tilt the gun down, you should be able to open it up and see that the firing pin is sticking through, so everything's working good. So, this is the Black Bear Prepper. If you guys have any questions, feel free to contact us on, um, you know, leave a message. Uh, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our videos. They're a lot of fun and we like to hear what you guys want to know about. There is also our videos on our prepping side of this business, of, the, uh, of our videos, and feel free to take a look at those also. So as always, have a great day.